it's Dr. Lori. This is Thrift with Dr. Lori, where you get to go shopping with me, the PhD antiques appraiser. And today I'm in Cheswick, Pennsylvania. I'm with Patty, who owns and operates Riverview Antique and Marketplace. Hi, Patty. Hi, Dr. Lori. Nice to see Hello. you. So, where are you? What's happening? It looks like it's white, white, white there. <laughs> this is our wedding section. Oh, okay. Wedding section. All right. Let's see. What should we get for our wedding gifts? Let's see. So what do you want to start with? I like the sculpted bowl. I like the white compote right there, right there near the veil. That's nice. Yeah, I like that. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, it's a compote within a compote. So you've got them stacked. Don't yes, stack those, do. Patty. I'm going to have a heart attack. Oh, my gosh. Don't stack those. <laughs> Oh, but they do look pretty like that, it. don't they? Yeah, they do. So I love that's it. lovely milk glass, of course, with the clear glass around the ruffled collar. So feminine and beautiful. It would look good on a bureau. It would look good in the dining room. It would look good in the living room with some, some hard candies. My mother always had a hard candies in a bowl at my house growing up. So what about those types of things? That's a beautiful, beautiful compote. So how much is that, Patty? Uh, let's see here. We have we have thirty on this Fenton. They're both Fenton. okay. Yeah, and of course. I think this is twenty-five. Okay, so I think those are great yeah. prices for those. That's a beautiful. I think you know somebody's going to scoop those right up. Those are beautiful, white, whatever color. But the white Fenton is nice, just like the Fenton plates that I've got here on my set. You know, it's wonderful to see. These, of course, are iridescent or carnival-style glass, iridescent glass. But you've got, of course, that nice milk glass, that beautiful white glass. Nothing beats mm -hmm. that for a wedding. Do you see that a lot of people come in when they're planning a wedding and they want the white antiques for their reception or their, their, um, uh, their dinner, those types of things? Oh, yeah. We've sold a lot of um, wedding items. Wedding planners come in. Oh, I didn't think that. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. A lot of people are doing their own wedding. Because they need the, a lot of people are because, of course, it's a little bit more inexpensive to do your own. And then it's your personal touch, too. So exactly. that's a nice thing. Exactly. Yeah, you know. What else have you got? You got any How about sorry. I'm sorry. I said someone just came in the shop last week, and she bought up a lot of our hobnail milk glass for her wedding. Oh, I see. Sometimes those white milk glass bud vases are also popular with brides or, of course, yeah. wedding planners, right? The white ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah. How, oh, the shoes. Yeah, we were talking about shoes and another one. A lot of people have the shoes relates to prosperity. How about the green swan? Let's look at that. Oh, yeah, that's an Oh, one. that's adorable. Mm -hmm. That's adorable. Now, you know, so many folks can do um, so much with those, not only reselling those, but those kinds of little trinkets are wonderful for that one piece that you need, that one element that you need, an accessory for, of course, um, a design, like a bedroom or maybe a guest room or a bath. I like that for a bathroom, you know, particularly that seafoam green color, that little turquoise seafoam green color. That's a mm -hmm. nice piece, too. How much is that? Uh, let's see here. That one is 15. Oh, that's a deal. I'm taking that all day, every day. That's adorable. <laughs> How about some silver? Oftentimes, if you're in a wedding area, there's some silver around. How about punch bowls or maybe punch bowl sets? Oh, uh, we had a punch bowl set, but someone bought the bowl for a golfing prize. Oh, really? So they wanted to use it as a trophy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's so we the cup. That's thinking outside the box. So you have the cups. Are the cups marked plated? Are they plated cups? They look plated. It says made in Hong Kong. That's the only thing they say. Okay, so those look like they are plated cups. So they didn't want the cups. They just said we only need the bowl. Isn't that interesting? So yeah. now with those yeah. types of things, with those types of things, the cups in your own home, you don't want to stack them because you could scratch them. But here you're trying to make as much room on your table and show off your table too, right? Yeah, yeah so yeah. That, those are nice. So two, four, six, eight, ten, ten cups, twelve cups. So all the cups together, a lot of people they do with those cups what a lot of people do with the broken 
um, teacups, the ceramic teacups, they put a candle in them, a votive candle, and they, in fact, will use them for votives all over. So that's a nice idea for those. A lot of people do that. How about that ladle? Is the ladle marked? Yeah, the ladle's marked. Let's see here. Hong Kong silver plated punch bowl. Oh, that was the yeah, whole that set was 50. And so this went with it. It has the little resty thing here. And, and the person who bought that really didn't want anything else. They just no, it. It How much did you charge them for the bowl? Because now you're stuck with a ladle that you could use, but you know, and then these cups that you have to think outside the box to, to utilize. Right. right? Yeah. So I wonder how much you got the, the punch bowl for. Oh, the bowl is 35 and oh, I wow. told him, yeah, I told him he could take the rest of it okay. with it, but he didn't. So 35 is pretty cheap for a big punch bowl of silver plate. Yeah, it now, was Because the small pieces of silver plate, if you're in those stores, you know a piece of silver plate could go 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 15 bucks for just a small little compote, you know, or just a small little tray. So a big plate, a big bowl like that, I'm, env I'm envisioning a pretty good size punch bowl, you know, is probably low at 35. So that's something. How about the swivel chair? Can you hop up there, Patty? <laughs> ah, you're good, Patty. There you go. <laughs> that looks like fun. So that's... <laughs> Early 20th century, and you can tell, of course, by the rosewood. That's a nice chair. I like that. How much for that? That's wonderful in a corner, right? Yeah. Well, we have this as a 1914 Milwaukee Chair Company artist school for 250 Wow. With that big crack down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> a little high. Okay, right? 150 <laughs> Yeah. I think that might have to go down to 150 Okay. We'll but you that. know what it might be? It might be as simple as this. The person who's selling it says, hey, I've only got one of these, and it was difficult for me to get. But the market will probably only bear about 150 on that. But I do like it, and it was obviously early 20th century. That's what I liked about it, too. It's in beautiful condition, and, of course, it has um, the support for your feet. You know, that's a nice piece. That's a nice piece. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. All right, let's look in the front of the store. Maybe we can find some toys or some other things. Let's see what else you've got in the store. Let's take a look at the store as we walk by. Ooh, well, ooh and ah as we go. <laughs> Purses and some other pieces, some jewelry. I like the sunglass area. That's nice. And we went by, oh, there's our brooch jacket. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's nice too. And then what's on this side? Oh. Hey, some Steelers stuff. Sports memorabilia is always big, always big. And you want to sell sports memorabilia, of course, in that season, right? In the season for, of course, that particular game. What else have we got? Oh, that's a nice piece. That's a big Hummel. That's a big Hummel by Goebel. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what's in the front. Mm -hmm. There we go. And there's my blue-white. Oh, yummy. I love the blue-white. Some green glass there. And then when we were coming, when we were um, seeing some of those Japanese flags, we see a lot of those, of course, from World War II that were brought back. You know, those mm -hmm. are, of course, uh, pretty desirable for military collectors. In the back, yeah. you can get a shot of that. That's a nice piece. There you go. Thanks, Leanna. Thank you for walking mm -hmm. back there. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of Japan, do you have any made and occupied Japan wares? Oh, yeah. Oh, let, yeah, most of the shops have those. Oh, mm. So Leanna's used to being in the back of it, but let's see him from the front. All occupied Japan, right, ladies? Just about. Yeah. Just about. So typically we see those low at about $5 for one figurine and high into the $15 range. Lots mm -hmm. of people have occupied Japan pieces. Of course, they were made, oh, there they are. They look like little Hummel figurines. Some of them look like Staffordshire figurines. And look at the dogs. Go back, go back, go back. I love the dogs. Oh, I love the dogs. <laughs> I love dogs. Oh, look at the chicken, the little egg cup, which is a chicken. I like that. Oh, yeah, I like that. And what's that, a little clock in the back? Oh, yeah, um, the man on the scale. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I found the man on the scale, that's uh -huh. why. 
No, <laughs> that's funny. Save that for me. <laughs> But the made in the made in occupied Japan wear pieces, you know, some of them replicate Staffordshire pieces, some of them replicate Hummel figurines from Germany, from the Goebel Company. They replicate different things. They were made after World War II while we occupied Japan, trying to, of course, rebuild Japan after the war. And these pieces were then made in Japan and then hand painted there and sent to the United States to, of course, help the effort to rebuild. So Americans would buy them in order to, of course, help the effort to rebuild. And now you're seeing them 75 years later coming onto the market again. So usually you see them about $5 to about $10 or $15 for one piece. They're really nice to look at. They're fun. They're reminiscent, of course, of a bygone days. How about that cookie jar? Is there a cookie jar in the window that I saw when we were coming in? Yeah. Let's yeah, see. Go back this way. Don't go so fast. We want to okay. look. <laughs> Don't go, go so fast. Oh, yeah. There's Mickey. There's Mickey. And what's that? A New York Yankees? Who is that plate? Um, Pirates. The Pittsburgh oh, the Pirates. Pirates. I was going to say, it couldn't be the Yankees. Oh, the Pirates. Okay. There's <laughs> wonderful. Oh, look at the old, look at the old, um, turntable, the old record player that you could take to your friend's house with a 45, <laughs> right? Yep. That's nice. That's that. a nice piece that a lot of us remember, right? Where we'd go to our friend's house and we'd bring our portable record player and listen to records. And vinyl's back so much. Do you have a lot of vinyl, Patty? We have a whole section of records. Yeah, I would think a lot of people have a lot of records. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna get to cookie jars and other fun. Oh, I brought you the front window. Alrighty, see if I can get it. One hand. Oh no! Don't drop it. Ah! We're good at this. <laughs> you are good at this. We got to get into the light, though. Let's see it in the okay, light. Let's go this way. This way. We're there coming. You. Thanks, Patty. You guys are sweet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Like the little old lady who lived in a shoe. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, nursery rhymes and cookie jars relate to the baby boom after World War II. So a lot of people coming home, of course, getting married, having babies. And cookie jars were one of the things. And nursery rhymes were a typical subject for cookie jars. So this was why we have all those cookie jars that are like the three little pigs and little lady in the shoe and all of this. Yeah, uh -huh. that's why, because it has to do with the baby boom. That's a nice thing. That's going to bring back a lot of memories for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. How much do you have that price at? Um, it faded, the tag. Oh, the tag faded off. Oh, no, because it's been in the window. Yes. Probably worth what about four. Think? What? What do you think, Dr. Lori? I think 45 to 65. Nice. Okay. I think yeah. we did have it around 40. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this this red piece of glass right there that's been, of course, etched. It looks like it's uh, red glass cut to clear. It might be ruby glass cut to clear. It was right on that cabinet, right at the front. They're trying to put back the cookie jar. I made them go get them, sorry. <laughs> I was curious. <gasps> yeah, I love that. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. Look at that. With, of course, the grapes. That's a nice, nice piece. Big, heavy, weighty, glass, gorgeous. It picks up the reflections. What are you doing with that, 125? No, we have $40 on it. Oh, you gotta double that. Wow. That's, worth, that's worth at least 80. That's a beautiful piece. Beautiful right. piece. Yeah, I like that very, very much. That that deserves a place of honor, of course. And I'm honored to have been with you ladies today. Thanks so much for thrifting with Dr. Lori. What a good time I had. Yes. I had a Thanks great time. So much. We'll see you soon at Riverview Antique and Marketplace in Cheswick, Pennsylvania. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being with me. Thrift with me. See you next time.